It's been two years since the Bentham Grid went online in New York City. It was a technological marvel. The grid takes all those things unique to you, your social security number, your passport, your debit and credit accounts, and links them to one thing, your DNA. With just a touch, the grid collects a tiny sample of your genetic material, IDing you instantly. Greg Bruce. Then a purchase can be deducted directly from your personal accounts, or you can unlock and start your car. Sid Batista. And it all works within a margin of error of 0.001%. The ultimate social network. No cash has to change hands. No ID cards have to be shown. No keys have to be carried. Saki Kashua. Today, you can't do anything in New York City without the grid knowing who you are and where you are. Julia Richards. After just six months in service, the state legislature passed an unprecedented bill giving law enforcement complete access to the grid's data. As a result, there hasn't been a reported case of identity theft in over 18 months. NYPD case clearances have soared above 90% and fugitives have been found and captured in record numbers. Thank you for using the grid. Shalom. I have to say all praises to Yahweh Hashem El Shai. Double honors unto the apostles of Great Millstone and Shalom to you brothers out there. Listen, this lesson that I am doing right now going to be entitled to chip or not to chip and this is really posed to all you scoffers out there like late satan's camp degenerate your honor all them dumb niggas out there and the question is posed that whether you, whether you will or will not get chipped and i'm going to provide you with some evidence for, for really not to take the chip you're going to take it if you're not of the elect or well, you might not have a chance to take the chip but this really is for the elector that are in those, those mad houses, those reveling whore houses, to get out of those places by this information. All right, so I'm going to get straight into it. This is on Revelations 13 and 15. And they have power to give life unto the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So the beast got its power from the Roman Empire, that red dragon. Basically, the image of the beast is, represents democracy, homosexuality, um, lesbian, bisexual, gays, transgenders, all, all things that are pushed forth in a society. That's the image of the beast. And it calls it all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Now that word there in the Greek for mark, because people will tell you not to go into the Greek or the Hebrew. But if you open your Bible, if you go to 1611, you go to the prologue of Sirach, it will clearly tell you that they labored to translate the words, but they can't find the same thing other than Hebrew, don't have the same strength in, in a different language, because there's not languages, I'm sorry, there's not words in that language to represent the things that are being said. So they had to bear, to, to, to really try and make up a word that closely addresses that same word that said in the um, said paragraph okay so you have to go back to the Greek and to the Hebrew and it's the reason why because if you if you don't even look at the word mark you could you could say oh you gotta receive a mark in your right hand you might have to meet a chap called mark and receive him with your right hand by shaking his hand <laughs> or you might have to get a felt tip and, and, and just write across on your on your on your right hand to be the mark of the beast. But that's not what it's saying. So you have to go to, to get to the real cause of the matter, you have to go to the root of the of the the word. And the root of the word just so happens to be in the Greek, so you have to go into the Greek. And when you check out the root of the word in the Greek, the word there is karagma, which basically means a mark, an incision or something inserted into your hand. So the only thing they're really pushing right now 
the only thing it could be hands down is the RFIB chip because like you have many many people in droves coming out to get this mark of the beast well not in droves I'm exaggerating a bit but there's many people that are interested in getting the mark of the beast due to things like transhumanism sinking their mind with a computer and getting some some a left hand side form of a spiritual power so there's many different reasons why or just for an easier lifestyle controlling your surroundings by way of the chip okay to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads and to and that no man might buy or sell save he that hath the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name here is wisdom let him that have understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man and his number is 603 score and 6 okay so that's going to be the the, the the basis of this lesson right here I'm going to focus on this 666 yeah the 603 score and 6 yep so when you go to the Greek the word there for 666 is sci-fi stigma okay 666 meaning which is the basis of much vain speculation the first word that you you get in that phrase sci-fi um, it's actually sci-fi stigma is high so I'm gonna look it up right now on the Eton it tells you that really the 22nd letter in the great alphabet but the main point I'm really gonna point to is to mark with an X yeah that's the main point okay now what I'm, what I'm gonna show you in this video I'm gonna show you that every character in that 606 basically actually represents the same thing an incision a mark yeah something put inside of you every letter in that in that word represents in that 606 v6 represents that same thing an incision inside of you shows you how bad the mosai is man. okay so history in ancient greek the, the x i pronounce it um ha the chai and it's this one's pronounced um, psi or psi yeah where among several variants of the same letter remember that yeah these are one of the, these are variations of the same letter like the i is a variation of like the j salak is a variation of the word i it's one it's the same letter but it's just a variant okay now i'm just gonna jump down to the point okay um The letter uh, chai and sai uh, for cha, believe it is, was a Greek addition to the alphabet placed after Semitic letters along with phi. The variant of um, sai later replaced the um, diagram of what I believe is pronounced phi sai, phi sai, because that that's the phi there. And that E looking um, letter is actually um, Psi, but it's in caps. Okay, um, Omega was a later addition. So the point I'm trying to, to make here is that the last word in the Greek alphabet, the 22nd letter is actually this letter right here, Chai. Yeah, and there's 22 letters also in the Hebrew. Now, the, the symbol for Chai. Is also the X like the same symbol is in the last letter in the, in the Lush one called Dash, which is far okay so these both both these words knowing that the Greek comes from the Phoenician what the, the scholars call Phoenician paleo Hebrew um, yeah paleo Hebrew what we know is a Lush one called Dash, they're one in the same words yeah so Chai and far one in the same because the the ha the chai goes back to the far okay so reading on it says um chai in ancient times some local forms of, of greek alphabet used the chai instead of psi to represent the psi sound this it was borrowed into the early latin language which led to the use of the letter x for the same sound in latin and many modern languages that use the Latin alphabet. So basically, what happened was this word um, chai 
the symbol that's represented by it being an X was placed upon the pronunciation of the word Sai. Yeah? And I like, and it says it was used later in Latin alphabet, which led to the English alphabet. Now we know it's by words like xylophone, that has the same kind of pronunciation. That's how you know they're one and the same words. Further backing up that point, now I'm going to move on to the word in the Hebrew, fa. Okay? Now, this is the main point, the origins of fa. Fa is said to have come from the, from a mark, an asterisk like marking, perhaps, um, indicating a signature. Yeah? Its literal usage in the Torah denotes a wound, a mark, a wound. Now, that's just, that's just telling you right there. It denotes a wound, an incision made. Yeah. But also, when it tells you in Ezekiel nine and four, that was a spiritual mark placed upon um, the, the 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 elect. You could say, yeah, it, it would the elect, the elect at that time that will set a mark upon them because we're still putting that mark upon them when we go out on our highways and byways. Okay, carving into reading on or in modern sem semantics carving into a surface so basically that that the, the first word that we've, we've established that this word chai means mark that's what it means it means an incision a mark made and it just said literally in the Torah denotes a wound so this is the origin of the word chai okay now moving on to sai okay sai it says the 14th letter of the Greek alphabet yeah now the reason why I got this other part is it tells you Sai, Scythius, genesis of the swordfish from Greek, Scythius, Scythius, swordfish, and from um, Scyphus, a sword, okay, so this is the origin, this Sai is the origin letter, the origin to the word Scyphos, which means a sword. So that shows you that's the same thing. It inflicts a wound, an incision. It, it's, it, it holds in regard the same thing. Now to further establish that, it says Sipho, sword shape, 7046 from Greek, Sipho is a sword of unknown origin. Klein suggests a Semitic source and compares Hebrew Saif and Arabic Saif, Saif, which basically when you check it out, when you check out the etymology of that word, it go it goes back to the word um, skamata. And you can look up what a skamata is. Skamata is a, basically an Arabic sword, man. One of them curved up blades. So that just shows you again that sci-fi. We established that there's a mark with a chai. Now the chai basically has a mark as it, it's a sword. And what does a sword do? A sword makes an incision. Okay fire the letter okay it's a 14th letter of the Greek alphabet it is pronounced um, Sai yeah or generally Sai say in English the system of, in the system of Greek numerals it has a value of 60 Sai was derived from Phoenician the Phoenician letter Samek okay just before I go into the word Semek, Sai is not to be confused with the letter Chai, which was gave its form, which gave its form to the Latin letter X. So that shows you they're one and the same. That's the point I'm trying to prove. Those two letters have the same meaning, yeah, because it told you the letter, it tells you the locals. Um, basically, they they through their language, they could basically change those two letters they could um like um going back to judges 12 5 and 6 where the um the gileadites was, was um warring with ephraim they they knew that they couldn't pronounce the word um i believe it's shibboleth or sibboleth let me quickly get this should be on the point let's read it real quick Judges 12, 5, and 6. I shall read the, read the point in 6. They said, say, they said, they unto him, say, Shibboleth. And he said, Sibboleth. 
for they could not frame to pronounce it right. So that's just the same thing back then in Greece. There was people there that replaced the word chai with sai, but it wasn't they could be understood at, in that time because people were aware of the meaning of the word that was being said. So that's the same thing going back to the Hebrew with Shibboleth being said by the Ephraimites, Shiboleth, it's the same thing. Okay. Both in, cl in classical Gre ancient Greek and modern Greek, the letter um, phi represents the sound um, chai, phi. In some Ariactic local variants of the Greek alphabet, the letter was missing. It said, especially in the dialects of most of the Greek mainland of E, U, e, Boa, the sound phi was represented by an X by X which is which in classical Greek is chai see because this variant of the Greek alphabet was used in Italy and the Latin alphabet borrowed X rather than um, psi as a Latin layer X so basically the same pronunciation but they, they, they correlated it with the same thing so they understood back then really they understood that the the original word really was the the chai, which is for wa. Oh, sorry, it's not for wa, fa, which goes back to the Hebrew. Okay. Now going back on the point, I'm gonna extrapolate on this point, the Phoenician letter to Mech, okay? Because this is gonna show you how deep the most high is, man. Okay, so this this Hebrew word, the way they say it is Semek, but the way you really pronounce it is Samak. Yeah, and in the Lush one called Dosh. Now the word Samak in the Hebrew, Lashawan Kodash means support, yeah? And it, it's where the the, um, the letter Sa comes from, yeah? So now I'm going to read this few points on this real quickly. I just want to extrapolate the main points. Um, Alright, origins. The origin of Samak, I'll just say Samak, is unclear. The Phoenician letter may continue a glyph from the Middle Bronze Age alphabet. So that's all bullshit, okay? Either based on a hieroglyph for a tent peg, some kind of prop, okay, and thus may be derived from the Egyptian hieroglyph, the Jed. Now that thing, the Jed, basically goes back to, um, basically goes back to, um, like I said, derived from tent peg, some kind of support, okay. So that basically leads credence to the fact that. When you even look at the the, the 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 actual meaning of it, support. When you really break it down, it looks like a, a coat hanger. So not a coat hanger, um, a clothesline. And a clothesline, you got to implant that into the ground. Now, when you go back to the word karagma, one of the root words for karagma is actually karax, karax. And one of the meanings of it is stake. Now, a stake is used for tent pegs. Okay. And we're gonna show I'm gonna show you how this all falls hand in hand all together. Every word in that in a sci-fi stigma or high fi stigma is all the same words. <laughs> it's just deep. It's all the same words. Okay. So like I said, the word samak goes back to support. But going back on the sorry, corrux, when you check it out, one of the words there is steak. And you use stakes, wooden stakes. To hold down your tent in the ancient world yeah or you could even use it in the modern day to, they still use it today but they don't use wooden ones so that's the same thing that's why it's represented as a, as a peg it actually is a support okay so now this I'm gonna jump into this, this is Isaiah 36 and 6 load our trust us in the staff of this broken reed on Egypt where an if a man lean it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh king of Egypt to all that trust in him. Okay, now I'm going to break this down here. First thing it says, Lo, thou trustest in the staff of this broken reed. Okay, now the word there for broken is Ratazai, which means to crush, to crush, oppress, be broken, grievously oppress. Okay, and that's our people. That's talking about the Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans. And all our people scattered all over the earth. They're they're dumbfounded, man. They're dumber than asses. And they basically 
believe in Egypt, which is a so-called white man's rulership, because he is set up today to rule. He is a modern-day Egyptian. Okay. So it says, like I said, it says to the broken reed. The broken part means ratazai, to crush, oppress, be broken grievously. Okay. But then when you look up the word reed, the word reed is quanai, quanas, quana. Okay, which means reed. It's various meanings. But the point I want to get to is when you look up a RFID um, syringe, okay, it's going to come up on a Wikipedia and one it will tell you it's called a canula, canula, which in, is a Latin word which means little reed, okay, so that's the same word, that canula is the same word, then when you look up the word cane, the word cane goes back to quana, okay? It actually, it really, so the word there for the syringe where the RFID goes into is the same word. So you're leaning, if you're trusting in this oppressive rod, which is the, imp, the oppressive, by you taking the RFID chip inside of you, is you basically submitting yourself, submitting yourself down to the oppression of Esau, the so-called white man, yeah? The devil the Bible speaks of. That's full submission. You're trusting it. And the word Egypt literally means bondage anyway. Okay, where on a, if a man lean, it will go in his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all that trust in him. So you're basically going to make him your support by leaning on it. So I wonder what word's there for support then, for lean. Let's find out. When you go to the word there, it's samak, which means lean. Rest, support upholds the stain and when you go into the genesis lexicon to place or lay something upon anything so that it may rest upon and be supported by it so you people are basically going to be the support of the so-called white man you're basically going to be his his kingdom's falling down but you want to try and raise it up by taking an rfid chip inside of you and that just shows you the importance of that word so much by leaning what are you going to lean on you're leaning on that that RFID chip being implanted in your hand, which is it pierces. Okay, so that shows you how that words so mark. I keep pronouncing it, but um, the incorrect ways. Um, so mark, yeah, that word so mark basically means support, and like it said, it could go. It goes back to like a tent peg with corrux. All these things correlate, man. This is giving credence to the to the, the fact that the RFID chip is the mark of the beast. That's what you gotta understand. This is giving credence to the fact that the RFID chip is the mark of the beast. Yeah. And we ain't done. We got more. Yeah. This is just the, <laughs> you know. Now you understand that's a mark. Is that's what it is, man. To lean lay rest support put uphold lean upon to lean lay upon rest upon lean against support okay and that's the genesis now going back to the, the, the to the wiki page um for samak when you scroll down it has a significance and it tells you samak in um g material has a value of 60 Okay, so it also has a value of six. <laughs> yeah, uh, which we'll get into in a second or a little later. So, Samak and um, Mem from the abbreviation for the Angel of Death, whose name in Hebrew is Samel, is also stands for for cent, um, centimeter. Okay, so now we're gonna go to Samel. Samel or Samuel Samuel or Samuel is an important archangel in Talmudic and post-Talmudic law a figure who is accuser seducer and destroyer and has been regarded as both good and evil but we know that he's straight evil they're just trying to say that to, 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 um, to confuse the masses Esau don't place one option in front of you being truth he praises truth and a lie and he, he he gives you the option of whether you're going to believe the truth or a lie 
or ultimately accept both and be confused because we're in Babylon, the land of confusion. Okay, it is said that he was the guardian angel of Esau and a patron of the Roman Empire. That right there shows you so hard that Esau and the Roman Empire, these modern day Romans today, are the Edomites of the Bible because they regard him in such high stead. Him being the guardian angel of Esau and the Talmud, which these Amalekites know about, yeah, they know that they're the Edomites. Just look at Rothschilds, for, for example, the Red Shield, Red Shield being represented. Okay, and a patron of the Roman Empire. They had a patron angel over the Roman Empire, which is known as Samil, which is a fucking evil demonic power. Reading on it says, he is considered in Talmudic Texas to be a member of the heavenly host with often grim and destructive duties. And look at the white man right now, man. Don't you represent all of that? He represents all of that. One of Samil's greatest roles in Jewish law is that of the angel of death. Yeah, he, will he is a harbinger of death, like I told you, you know. Let <laughs> him the beast in great numbers. You know, the planet of the apes. He remains one of the Lord's servants, even though he appears to want him. men to do evil. Drive That's right, because the Lord deals with the left hand there. side and the right hand side. He tells you in Proverbs 16 before he made the day, he made the wicked for the day of evil. Okay? But this is all the bullshit after follows. It said, as a good angel, Samuel resides in the seventh heaven. There's no such thing as no seventh heaven. Although he is declared to be the chief angel of the fifth heaven, um, the reason is being uh, presence to the throne of law in the fifth heaven. But now, going back on the point, I'm just going to knock out these scriptures real quick because it says he's accuser, seducer, destroyer, and these are the characteristics of Esau today. The so called white man, he's a devil, the Bible speaks of. So I'm going to jump first into uh, Isaiah 10 1. Woe unto them that decree and righteous decrees and a right grievousness which they have prescribed to turn aside the needy from judgment. Let me read that again. Woe unto them that decree and righteous decrees and unrighteous decrees something like allowing homosexuals to have equal rights. Watch a documentary the other, um, just yesterday with a couple of the in, in, in the camp and they were showing how there was a faggot over there from Vice magazine fucking skanking out, shocking out with those fucking homos, transgender looking niggas in Jamaica in the road doing madness with them and he's trying to, he's, he's basically saying yeah it's okay for them to carry knives but he comes over here to England because he's from England he won't, he won't, he won't settle for like niggas in the, in the, in the streets having knives to defend themselves from other niggas or guns to defend themselves from, from a white man even even though they get shot in the street like Mark Duggan he won't justify them for that but he'll justify some faggots that have knives in case they get attacked and killed by mobs and even like the brother said it's a democracy if the, if the if the masses of the people choose that they don't want homosexuals in their country then that's, that's up to them in accordance with democracy okay so reading on it says and that right grievousness which they have prescribed to him, seeing two homosexuals walk on the road holding hands that's grievousness, man. To turn aside the needy from judgment and to take away the right from the poor of my people that widows may be their, their prey and that they may rob the fatherless. And that's what they do to us by way of they, they, um, justifying their laws. That's what they do to us, man. Okay, I should read this verse 3. And what will you do in the day of visitation and in the desolation which shall come from far as being the missiles from Russia with love, man? Japan, sorry, not Japan. Well, Japan's gonna t throw some nukes on you, Lord Will, man. They're gonna remember Hiroshima and Nagasaki, big boy, and them two um, atom bombs. But South Korea, all your opposing forces are gonna send missiles from far away. To whom will you f flee for help? No one's gonna help you, man. No one's gonna regard you in that day. And where will you um, leave for glory? That's right, because the most has said in Malachi that if you will build, I will throw down. Okay, so this is a uh, jump to Habakkuk. Chapter 2, verse 5. 
uh, start from four. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. That's right, man. You got Esau's spirit inside of him is doing a handstand and walking. Yeah. But the just shall live by his faith. Yea, also because he transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man, and neither keepeth at home. All these things are the, the characteristics of Esau, the so-called white man. He don't stay at home. He's a proud man transgressing, but the wine is talking about his, his um, obscene doctrines of homosexuality. You have sexual orders for, for um, productivity, but yet uh, plowing a seed inside of a man's buttocks, an anus, there's not going to be no productivity from that. Just death, okay? Neither keep it at home, even larger if he's desire as hell. And he's as death. What did he say about Samuel? He said that a figure who is an accuser, seducer, and destroyer. And he even said that he, um. <laughs> yeah, Jewish law is that he's the angel of death. So imagine this was a guardian angel of Esau to be an accuser, seducer and destroyer and a patron of the Roman Empire now, even when you go back to um, Cain and Abel man, Cain and his son um, Tubal Cain they both slew men and then they were marked with a mark of exemption basically being leprosy and anyone that took any um, revenge on them would be to their own error so basically that's the same thing right there man. shows you how, how, how deep this word is so um, and had all these characteristics I'm out, that being outlined in Habakkuk was the same thing he done, he, Esau done back then as Cain and he's doing right now but he's done it to Romans as well done as Esau and he's doing today yeah but gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people okay all people are underneath his power um on so with that you should understand you're taking that beast that mark of the beast you're basically cut you're in what you're at one with satan so, yeah so i got to stigma yeah uh stigma is a, a ligature of greek letter stigma and and two i'm sure if we pronounce that right but basically um that that's basically these this word stigma is a form of sigma and tau being put together in one hence why stigma instead of sigma okay which was used in writing Greek what well, that's the point on that I'll move on um, now I also said um, it's also used as a numeral symbol for the number six okay now when you check out the numerology of the number six this is what i'm reading man it says no number is without weaknesses and faults but a six is actually the most harmonious and stable among nine single digits yeah that so they say but those seven is out of all single single digits seven is the most harmonious meaning perfection yet perhaps for the same reason when an unusual when um the unusual happens and a six falls into discord and disharmony it becomes possibly the most destructive and dangerous of all numbers hence why this video is, is on the topic of 666 high fire and stigma okay beware of the cynical or angry six she is merciless she is a merciless wolf in sheep's clothing okay so going on stigma okay it says um mark made on skin by burning with a hot iron you're gonna get a burning sensation when that chip goes inside of you and dislodges your skin. You, anytime you've had a cut, you can get a burn. Yeah. And that iron is gonna be that needle. Okay. The mark is gonna be placed inside you, which is an RFID chip. The Greek stigma, genitive um, stigmatos, mark of a pointed instrument, puncture, tattoo mark, brand. Okay. Branding of what? Of Esau. Esau's brand, you you submit submit yourself happily as a slave unto your master Esau. You have your father, the devil, and lust of your father, you shall do. Okay, um, and it also goes to stick pointed, 
which I'm going to move on to in a second, but figurative meaning a mark of disgrace. So all these, all those numbers, sci-fi and stigma have a meaning and a place and a deeper meaning, which really is plain and sad. It shows you that this mark of the beast is the RFID chip indeed, and it's going to be implied inside of you. It ain't no stupidness like an embargo Christianity. Because in Revelations 14 and 9, it tells you once you take that mark, you have your place in the lake of fire. Yeah? So now jump into the word stick. Main points on this um, stick, sticker, rod twig, peg, spoon, all peg. Like a peg, tent peg. Going back to Samak, same thing. Pierce prick. Okay, um, to stick, pointed. Many staff using the game. Um, do, 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 do. Going on to the verb for it. To pay a stab, transfix gold. Also to remain embedded. The RFID chip remain embedded side under your skin. Stay fixed, be fastened. Yeah. Pierce, prick, be sharp. Uh, to stab, to prick, to gold. Even to gold. That even falls in line with. Um, to gold that even falls in line with uh, what the elites call you goyim and what was the gold used for gold is used to move the cattle at their will wherever they please them okay Exodus 21 and uh, 1. Now these are the judgments that thou shalt set before them. If thou buy an Hebrew servant six shares, he shall serve, and in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. A law which Esau doesn't follow. He turns things up. So you're turning the things upside down. That's what, that's what he prescribes to. I'm writing like it said in Isaiah 10 and 11. On righteous decrees, man, a grievousness. Okay, if thou buy a Hebrew servant six years, he shall serve, and in the seventh he shall go out, for, 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 out free for nothing. If he came in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he were married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master had given him a wife, he so gave you a wife, he controls her. Because everyone, when they, when they come out of the womb, they're basically under maritime law. You're deemed as a package because you, you're, you're like the boat that came out, um, the package that came out of the the boat on the seas of the water that your mother broke out when you, before you were born okay and you're basically a possession onto him because he has your number the, what we have over here in England we have the um, national insurance number in America they have the social security okay that's that's how you're a possession onto him so if your mom said giving him a wife he gave you a wife and, he, and she had borne him sons or daughters, yep, she bought, she gave birth to you, his sons and daughters, which are all possessions of Esau, your family ain't your family, you're all slaves under the same master, the wife and her children shall be her masters, and he shall go out by himself, yep, yeah? and if the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife and my children, I will not go out for free, then his master shall bring him to the judges, he shall also bring him to the door, or onto the doorpost, and his master shall bore his ear through with an awl, and he shall serve him forever. That all today would be the RFID chip, and it wouldn't be in your ear, it would have been in your forehead or it would be in your right hand. Yeah, so that's that same thing that would turn you into cattle, man, that he can go about wherever he pleases. And, and who are the people that get who, what, what, um form of beast actually receive marks today it's the animals to track their whereabouts so that's the same thing Esau showing you that he don't deem you more than an animal okay um just going back on this word stigma it goes back to the word sigma which <laughs> goes back um shape and alphabetic position of sigma derived from the Phoenician shah they say shin, but it's shah. Okay? That 
that's the origin of Shah. Okay, so um, Shah literally means teeth. Well, what they actually put in there is Shan. Shan is a true word that originates in the Hebrew Lush one Kodash letter Shah. Okay, and the word Shan means teeth. That's really what it means because you see it's a W, a W shape. I'm trying to find one, they don't have one here. I'll go back. You see, and if you had a line, if you put a line there, it'd be like a gum line, and that'd be like a tooth. Okay, so that shows you teeth, press, and sharp. So all these things correlate with, with the mark of the beast again, man. Teeth, press, sharp. Um, <clears throat> going to the point. Um, sigma. We already know sigma means a mark, incision. It's the same thing, man. It really goes back to. Esau wants to sink his teeth in you, man. And basically print his mark upon you, which makes you his possession. Alright? So, um, with that, I want to read this last scripture upon this from the Shah. This is um, 1 Peter 5 and 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, Samuel, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So, like I said at the beginning, what are you niggas going to do? You're going to take the chip? You ain't going to take the chip? Is the mark of the beast the RFID chip? I think it is, and I think you know it is. So, I think you should respect the levels, man. You're talking a lot of bullshit out there, man. Saying all this bullshit about it ain't no RFID chip. I, I plainly proved my point of what I'm saying, but the elders have done been saying it for the longest time, man. And all the other brothers out there, man. They've been proving it for the longest. So I know you niggas are full of shit, but this is just more of a, more further proving to get the blood off our hands and to, to, to bring in the elect and to put this to your error that you didn't take in wisdom, man. So with that, I'm going to say shalom to you brothers out there, man. All praises to Awa, Bar Shami Awa Shai, and double honors unto the apostles of Great Millstone, man. Shalom to you brothers out there. Keep your head up, keeping this truth, perseverance. Shalom. Mayor Reed, I think the question everyone here is asking is, is the right to privacy effectively dead in New York City? The crime rate in this city is now lower than that of Cheyenne, Wyoming. I think anyone, including my fellow law-abiding New Yorkers, would happily sacrifice a little bit of privacy for that kind of personal safety. Many hailed the launch of the Bentham Grid as the funeral for American crime. But it was the day that something else began. Detected. Target just got picked up on 8th Avenue. Alana Winston. Looks like she's a reporter. Send in Foucault. Have a nice day, Mr. Foucault. We are still without answers as to what caused a small plane to crash in Austin, New York, just two days ago. Over the last 48 hours, search I'm on mobile, in pursuit. Don't get into another foot chase, Foucault. Just walk up behind her, hit her with the decap, and bring her in. I'm Inspector Foucault. You're gonna have to come with me. Shit. Here we go. Alana! 
activate every grid node we can get in that area. Declared and undeclared. That's currency, trains, doors, anything we can get our hands on. Box her in and shut her down. Grid locked down. South on Broadway. Introducing the new iHollow. With new groundbreaking hollow stream technology. Into a razor sharp 3D hologram. some help you gotta get me back up send me whatever you got she's dodging all the grid points i don't have her either but i'll bet you lunch she's trying to get lost in the park scanning grid i think i got her sir we got her Let her in the park. Target locked. I got her. Miss Winston. You can't beat the grid. Sir, she's down. Oh. Bring her in. <laughs> 